Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are painting this adorable, loving rooster, and if you, I don't know if you know this or not, but this is always a great thing to have in your kitchen, no matter what, because having a rooster in your kitchen is considered a sign of good luck, and I don't know about you, but I need all the luck I can get in the kitchen, so um, I'm much better at painting than I am at cooking, but this is uh, this gives you a nice idea of what the uh, bigger version of this painting looks like that we do in our live studio classes. And then we'll be painting one with our painting kit. So we do sell painting kits on our website at tipsyartist.com. So we'll get to that, but that's a 9 by 12 canvas, and I'll be teaching you that step by step. And we make it very fun and easy with traceables. And so, um, but I did want to give you a visual of this first before we get started. And then we'll go ahead and switch camera views and get to work um, with a aerial view over that here in just a moment. All right, so here we go. Let's switch views. Make sure I can see what I'm doing. All right, so yeah. oh, my little puppy dog is kind of in the way, so I might have to get him here as much. <laughs> He's like, hmm, I don't like that. All right. All right, so here we go. So this is the size that we use with our uh, painting kits. This is a nine by 12 canvas panel. Get my sleeves organized here. All right, so just to give you an idea of what some of your tools look like here that come with your kit. Um, we have a cute little uh, tool kit here and then your paints. This is what it looks like brand new. And then my setup here, I'm going to be using some older paints so that I can use them up because they definitely last for more than one painting. I'll be using those up. And I've got my little paint plates here and our brushes. We have a little family of brushes. I've got my mama brush, little buddy, and then little bit. And then you want to make sure you get a bucket of water nearby. That's about the only thing I can't really put in the kit is the water in the bucket and so. stuff. All right, so everything else you've got. And let's go ahead and talk about our traceable process. So we also have a permanent marker and a pencil in there. And the first thing you're going to want to do is place your transfer paper in the center um, of the canvas panel. And I've worked ahead a little bit, but basically you'll wanna do, do the tape right up here at the top and only there. You wanna make sure that this is able to move so that you can check your trace as you go. So you wanna make sure you get all the details in place first. So I've only typed up here at the, at the top. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, traceable and I'm just going to tape this up at the very top too. It's just right in the center of the canvas. So that's in place. Then I take the pencil, that's gonna be the first step. And basically all you're going to do is just draw right over the top of every line. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to do that. So you'll do that hard press drawing right over the top. That's why you have to lift up and check your work to make sure you get all the lines done. All right, so again, I mentioned I did work ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this off because I know I've double checked. I've got all my line work done. Place this off to the side. Then your permanent marker I go ahead and do this hard line over the top of all those lines uh, because it really helps salvage all of your work just in case you're paying along and you accidentally, it's easy to cover up a light pencil line, which is what it will look like initially. So then I go ahead and do the hard black line, which will bleed through a lot. Um, so that's a nice little cheat there, very helpful. So I've done that. I'm gonna go ahead and work off, just place that off to the side there. All right, so I've got my napkins out, water, my brushes. I have a little bit of some titanium white and Mars black already out, um, or it's called lamp black with this particular painting kit that I have here. And um, we're gonna go ahead and start with this lovely background here to begin with. All right, so I'm going to be using some yellow ochre here. Now keep in mind, um, you'll have a new kit, so yours will be brand new. So if I get to that point where I'm running low on some of these, I may have to open up a new one. So right now, I'm going to try to use up what I've got. Try to be responsible with this. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do a nice big 
like a nickel sized dollop of that. Put that off to the side. And I also want to do a little bit of this burnt sienna, a little, little touch of that to play with. And I might even have a little touch of crimson in here too. All right, so I'm going to take, I'm going to start with my mama brush, and I always recommend doing a little dip into the water, since it might be a little bit stiff as a new brush, and then we're going to go ahead and just dry that off, so it's nice and moist, ready to use, and oh, you want to go out and do some lemon yellow that brightness happening. Let's take a look at our color palette here, but this to start with. Yeah, I, you probably don't need that much white, but I just had some out. All right, so I'm gonna take a little dollop of the white, we're gonna push that over here, a little touch of lemon yellow, a little touch of that yellow color. We're gonna those two, three, together. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to work this into the background, little tiny cross strokes over and over. Just cross back and forth. Um, that into it. Touching to a little bit of that lemon yellow, a little bit of that white. A playful look with all three of those. I would be careful around my little bead here. A little bit of white. But as I mentioned, we have that hard line. So see, that's going to bleed right through. And that little bit of a crisscross stroke back and forth. A little bit of white. What about that one yellow? Cross back and forth. This all into our background here. We're going to just kind of continue to alternate our colors between that white. Our Be a little bit relaxed as I cut in around those little pearl feathers. Yes, again, you can see how the permanent marker there is just bleeding on through. It really saves us a lot of time. A 
Right, and then you want to spend little touches of just being and touch into that little bit of crimson. Kind of dust that into the corner there. A little bit of pink to the sky. And then the paint is still wet, so it's going to have a nice soft blend between those two. A bit of that crimson here. Repetition, just kind of sweep it in and back and forth, almost like you're making those little letter X's over and over. Again. What about that Y? Help softly blend that a little bit of that blend. Touch of that crimson over here. I'm just going to crisscross it in while that paint's still wet. This makes a fun little picture comes in. All right, so that's very pretty. We're going to go ahead and lay this out. And dry off. Let's go ahead and use our little bit brush. Put a bit of that water and a crimson paint. We're going to go ahead and this top part here. Put a bit of water to that, make it paint more fluid, easier to move. Push so we can make that little curve. Spill the sand. And that little bit of this little, you know, it's like a teardrop shape right into here. Put that in here too. Oh, God, look. Part is while we're at it. White. Pink Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and start to work in uh, little bits of feathering in here. I also want to make sure I've got a little bit of this vermilion. It's kind of a nice little orange color. It's very pretty. Let's have a little bit of that nearby. Oh, and you know what? I'm also find some. So 
I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this. So darker shadow colors in here are going to be our raw umber, crimson, a little bit of our sienna, maybe a little patch of this vermilion. And then as it starts to lighten up, as we start to do lighter feathers, then it will be more of our white and our yellow ochre and our yellow. Let's start with some of those darker jades. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of water on the branch, grab some of that raw other. Let's see on that. I'm just going to do a little bit of here. Get that light feather in the side. But that Sienna, look into some of that. Kind of blending on the actual canvas itself. I need this piece off the side. Put your cleansing in here. Let the light map a little more of that vermilion and that yellow over. So we get a little bit into more of the same here. A lightly feather between those two. A little darker, kind of dip back into that raw umber. Let's see, Anna. Give it a little water to help it be a little easier to make a little thin whiskey off to the side. The little tiny short dash strokes, and then you lift off in the right hand, do a little feathering on the lift off. Like that. Put a yellow, white, yellow over into the center. And the dash strokes around that. Just a little play ball. Well, it's very little tiny short strokes. Why is it here? And I can go back and touch up those little hearts. Actually, just a little bit of a white highlight on there. And those little markings. There's a little tiny short strokes, and when you get to the end, you lift off of the right here. I definitely want to make sure that this little part here takes a dramatic shape. So I'm going to work that shape in here. 
and you have darker amber and crimson red. Sweep that up. And this little side feather. Put a few more of that blue. Don't look that in. A little bit of shadow in there. Put that crimson in there too. Little upward. Curving strokes for that feathering. Yeah. Have a little bit of that vermilion, kind of warm that up. And little upward strokes here. With a nice little coral color to it. Break with some strokes around that, give a little bit of fun shade. I to shift back the other direction, just more of that. Well, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that is that in little tiny short curve strokes. Here. In, work that in. And then you can work. Open strokes here. Let's Yeah, I want to warm this up a little bit with our vermilion. A little bit of white to that, maybe some kimchi. Light, pink, and vermilion. Mm 
this ultramarine blue and the white. I do my little blue part here. So it's a little catch. Something here, and then I can pop that little part right back out to the right here. A little patch, and patch, and then down to a nice fine point. So it's like pure white now. Big white heart Sweep back in the little crimson here, just kind of reinforce this little half circle on this better shape. Draw on the dark that up a little bit. Make sure we've got some nice texture to it. Okay. Darker, like vermilion with the blue. It's very interesting. Viridian, sorry, y'all. Um, so, Viridian, and we're going to do a little bit more of that. that ultramarine. I'm going to go to that turquoise color. Got some water to it. Make it a little more soupy, more fluid, easier to work with. More white over here. I'm going to do a nice sweep of it over here. Long upward strokes, kind of feels like it's like a big long breath instead of here. Lift off with a wide hand. A bit darker with that viridian. And that darker blue, a little more better than that section here. Back in light. It's a white in here. There's some darker shadows in there too, but I'm going to do them again. I'm just going to work from this beautiful kind of turquoise color. Fishing that white in there too. Soft curves all around. So I'll lift off with a light hand. The little touches I can do here too to soften the line this lot. And I mentioned we had a little bit of that darker black in there too. It's kind of 
Okay, a few little shadows. We'll start to work that in too. Uh, sweeping, just gently lots of black in there. That just kind of softly blends with that. A little bit of that shadow with the black here on his side as well. Softly feather around that with a feather that comes up. Little tiny touches of that black that brings a little bit of shadow in there too. It's kind of better that still section here. Cleaning out. Little curving strokes here. Look at him out here. And then I'm going to come back in with more of this lighter, brighter red. So I add some of that vermilion and liquid red, that crimson red. Put the two of those together. I'll so work this into that little goblet in there. Next, pop of that bright color right over the top. I think here, we have that little, almost like a little teardrop shape of that. And back in, again, this is a mix of that vermilion with the crimson red. I'm going to do another second coat here over the top. Sweep that in. Second coat. Circle around that eye. So I just do a little twirl here into that paint. A little water. Out. I'm going to come in and do that little beat, so I need a little bit more lemon water. Lemon yellow is going to mix with that yellow ochre. We're going to mix those two together. A little coral in there, that nice long point. And bring this a little bit closer. Just gonna bring in a little bit of that for our and just right on the edge of that big too. That nice contrast between the sky. And well, I'm going to get a little coral in there, grab some water too, so it's a nice fine point. 
I'm just gonna make sure I do the line in the middle of the Everything a little bit of that black, rather on the eyes here. A little amount of that raw umber that comes in on the top of the eye. And white, I'm just going to take a little, see the right here, just like a little cup, a little soft curve. Letting it just light glare, see so you know, the curtain. I'm going to take a little bit brush. I'm just going to do a little bit more like little feathering here. Yeah, a little ochre. Lemon yellow. The nose in your chin is going to warm it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same. Again, with more of those warm vermilion tones and the crimson red. And I'm also going to reinforce this little hot that we said we were going to do. So we're going to work on some of those crimsons and we're going to work that up here too. So. I should that crimson red. And then one more underneath. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out here. Work on those little feet. We're going to just do a nice light gray. So we're going to do some white and a little bit of that black. And a little touch of the crimson red in there, too, just like that hint of mom and this crap. Add some water. Put that in terms of the feet. I thought that little bleed through finding those little feet were going to come back now. Let's pop here just a second. Let's out. Then we're going to do a little bit of some white. 
I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of some purple. So that blue and red and that purple going. And touch that purple in there. And just underneath for that shadow. Okay. There's some light, light pink. Really Got some of our little so actually let's do a little wash of some rain down here at the base. So maybe this half. Let's hope there's a game. Look at that. And then yellow. And yellow ogre. Turn to the ground here. Look at the angle. Right. Put that into it. Yeah. We're going to spread this now, turn that brush more over to the side. Put plants with that darker, there's going to be just a pure uh, spill clear color just to cover the top. Switch to the small brush. And then the tear door here. Back a little bit. Screen, what is that? Draw over. Go ahead and see that. So, no, no, no. So, um, Number with that green. Some of that too. Oh, oh, come on, that too. Mm 
And this is that yellow ochre, that thicker's grain, raw amber. A little bit of white in there too. Just working that in there as a feet. A lot of that yellow ochre really warms it up. A nice blending tool to kind of soften that up in that area. You can come back in with a little bit of white in there too. Sweep that in, just come back and forth. Need that little flower here. Over the white, super strange. Push it back and forth. Scores off strokes there. Throw that burnt sienna in there too, and now again, it's pretty awesome. So sort of do some other strokes this way. I'm just getting the vertical straight, but I'm sorry, the horizontal strokes first. Let's put a little bit of raw under in there, a bit darker shade. A little bit of that blue, too, is pretty in there. Okay, too much. So, the vertical strip here. So that Caribbean. That down to this old flower, little vertical strokes. Oh, I'm going to buy two. back to some of those little flowers. So using a little bit again. Load up here with right. So our vermilion again. Those little petals. Uh, 
Center of the burner, that red, the heart. And let's go with some purple. So we're going to do a little bit of this old marine blue. Emson red. light lavender there and we're gonna just make a little touch of that. And let me switch over to like a light blue here too. Viridian and of course. But most pockets get down over the front. We do a few little meridian hearts have little bits of blue in them. And a little bit brush. Little turquoise center in there. Back to our crimson red. I do a little center of that there. The crimson red color here. Yeah, that is. Just feel free to kind of play with colors. I don't always have to be exactly the same every single time. Right here. Just 
So have our vermilion and our lemon yellow, so I do a little touch of that. They're pretty messy, right? All right. So using a little bit brush for that. Fill that in. Take a little touch of that lemon yellow. Your little push into there. And you can do some fun little green leaves here too. So like a little parenthesis shape and a little parenthesis shape. Touch of the brush there, and I'll put it on the leaf. Make it a nice little fine point. One thing, just fill that in. I'm just going to sweep back in a few other colors here, just a little horizontal strokes, just back. Let's see. Okay. Get that really light, light, light green. Wow, slightly back up and forth. A few little, kind of like, it looks like little grass is coming up here. Little so, sprigs of grass. A soft little of course, and this one across. A little bit more water to keep that stopping as it comes out to that. It's great for that. I work back and work a little bit. Turns out, and we're just looking for little accents now. We have a little bit of this white. We're going to mix with a little bit of this. Vermilion here. And with my touch of that, with like a light coral. And then I'm just going to do a tiny little accent, a soft curve of this top. And Better in here.
Brighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little better than scripts. More touches of some of that vermilion and that crimson. Some soft little feathery strokes in here. Mm -hmm. I have this little ending here, this little. <laughs> Maybe you want to just solid white, just kind of sweep that in over the top side of the brush. Let's talk to you better. Feathers here more a little bit more white. I just come in and check it up when I'm there. The light pink in the other part. Okay, I'm just gonna make that pop a little bit. Into an outline. Feathering. Okay, brush strokes. Here we do a few more little sweeps of this ultramarine blue and the white of the red too. Side brush there to pull that back through a little bit. Mm 
little bit more ultramarine blue, and I'm as we get to be more coals. Alright, so we played with the flowers a little bit in terms of colors are not all exactly the same. But... For the most part, we get rendition of what we had in the first place. I always try to be a little bit more creative and just kind of, you know, always encourage people to kind of do their own thing and play with colors a little bit. Just have fun with that process. Hey, that's your. Final step will be to sign your masterpiece here, but you want to wait for it to completely dry. And then you can do that at the very end, just right here in the bottom corner. That's going to be your final step there. And you can do that with your permanent marker too. Uh, so that's a fun way to do it. It's a little bit easier than painting it on. But if you do paint it on, use your little bit brush and you can do a little twirl here. I would add a little bit of water and do a little bit of twirl into your paint like that and then you can just hold the brush like a pencil and do, do tiny little lines that way and just work that on all right so again we are done thank you so much for joining me today we had a lovely time painting this beautiful little rooster that will be good luck in your kitchen it's very loving it's got all the fun little hearts and everything my little flowers and super cute. So all the supplies that you need for this are on our website at tipsyartist.com. We have the traceable or the whole painting kit. But thank you again for joining us. We had a great time and we look forward to seeing you soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.